Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I know this might be a little long, scattered, and kind of heavy for a second visit video, but I really wanted to take the time to spread some awareness on a subject that's very near and dear to my heart, and I hope that you all learn a little something new that you might not have known before about a subject that hits so many people, metastatic breast cancer. What do you think when you see those pink ribbons all around? Most people say, fight for a cure, but what if you find out that there is no cure for you? I'm a mother, a wife, a grandmother, an aunt, and a nurse, and on September 25th, 2018, I became a metastatic breast cancer thriver. So how did I get here? I'd been having some back pain on and off for the past few weeks, or maybe months before that fateful day, but there was nothing too terrible. A little bit of biofreeze, some Tylenol, and naproxen, and I was fine, but that day was different. I had a meeting to go to for work, and I got up at 6 a.m., but as I sat up in bed, I felt this pop and pain like I'd never felt before. But life goes on, right? So I took my medicine and got dressed slowly. I drove to work for the meeting, an hour-long drive, in pain the whole time. It was a quick meeting, and I drove back, took a shower, hoping the heat would relieve the pain. And when it didn't, I decided as soon as I finished my classes that day, I would finally make a trip to the emergency room. I was able to make it through the first class that day. The second class didn't happen. As I drove myself to the hospital, it was a slow day, and I got right in. After a dose of pain medication, I was pain-free for the first time in months. They sent some lab work off, and I caught up on a couple of the TV shows I'd missed when I was at work while I waited. Now, actually, since I was pain-free, I just napped. Next up was some scans, and because my pain was so vague, the original thought was maybe my gallbladder was acting up. It was supposed to come out years ago, and so maybe that was the culprit. Or maybe it was just some kidney stones. But that was the day that I learned I had cancer. I still have cancer, and I will always have cancer. Being diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer was actually really ironic. I had been a women's health nurse for two years. My patients were women with things like breast, uterine, and cervical cancer. So how did I miss the signs? I was a women's health nurse, but I'm embarrassed to realize just how little I knew about metastatic breast cancer before I was diagnosed. To be honest, I don't even remember learning about it when I was in nursing school only eight years earlier. That was when I realized just how many women missed the signs. They always say early detection is key. Make sure you do your monthly breath, breast exams. Well, guess what? I had no obvious signs. My oncologist said it was possible that I'd had it for quite a while before it moved on to my bones. And I'm not alone. So what have I learned from this experience that I can share with all of you? Metastatic breast cancer is stage four. Unfortunately, a pretty name doesn't change what it is. Stage four is terminal. It's just a matter of how long. Advanced breast cancer means the cancer is spread to another site outside of the breast, such as organs like the liver, lungs, brain, or lymphatic system. In my case, it's spread to my bones and is in my right sternum, scapula, some ribs, my spine, and my right pelvis. When you hear about a cancer metastasizing, that's meaning that it moved outside somewhere other than where it began. Even though the cancer moves to another part of the body, that doesn't change what it is. It's still breast cancer and is treated as such. When it moves to the brain, it isn't considered brain cancer. If it goes to the lungs, it's not lung cancer. If you look at the cells under a microscope, there are still breast cancer cells. As someone fighting metastatic breast cancer, there's so many things that I've learned that are misconceptions. Firstly, no one brings it on themselves. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people talking about how sugar can bring it on, and if you starve your body of all sugar, you can cure it. I've heard other people say, well, so-and-so that I know is diagnosed with stage four, but they're in remission now. There is no true remission for stage four. Metastatic breast cancer results in treatment for life. The most a breast cancer fighter can hope for is no evidence of the disease, which means it's undetectable by radiological testing, or in my case, no evidence of active disease since the bones will never completely heal. At this point, researchers haven't identified which breast cancers will result in a metastasis. While you can have genetic testing to find out if you have risk factors, that only shows whether you're at risk for breast cancer breast cancer. It says nothing as to whether you're at risk for it progressing to stage four. In my case, I had no genetic factors and no family history, and the testing that I had after the fact also showed that I had no genetic factors. My genes were fine. I was just simply hit by a lightning bolt called metastatic breast cancer. Often when women have had a prior battle with breast cancer and later declared cured, they think the fight's over. But sadly, not enough oncologists prepare them for the sad reality that in approximately 20 to 30 percent of patients who are initially diagnosed with an earlier stage breast cancer will later be diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. After patients start to hit that five and 10 year mark, they start to breathe that sigh of relief. Sadly, approximately 78 percent of patients 
die within 15 years of being diagnosed with a, any breast cancer of any stage. I didn't have any prior breast cancer. I was one of the approximately 6 to 10% who are initially diagnosed as metastatic. One of the hardest things stage 4 breast cancer or uh, breast cancer fighters or thrivers, as we like to refer to ourselves, is that our cancer is not curable. From that point on, we're always going to be in treatment of some kind, whether it be one of the new lines of treatment that there are, such as oral medications, sometimes given in conjunction with a monthly or more often shot. Other patients require more traditional methods such as surgery, radiation, or intravenous chemotherapy. While there is no cure available, one of the primary focuses is on reducing symptoms and allowing the patient to live as full of a life for as long as they can. When you hear that someone died from breast cancer, it means the cancer metastasized. People don't die from early stage breast cancer. They die once it invades organs and bones. In 2019 alone, approximately 42,000 men and women died from metastatic breast cancer. Yes, you heard me correctly. Men get breast cancer too, and account for approximately 1% of all newly diagnosed cases. Unfortunately, there have been no significant changes in survivability in the last 20 years, even as newer treatment options have been discovered. The average five-year survival rate is only approximately 22%, year, uh, 20, 22%, and it's fatal for 97 to 99% of those diagnosed. While it's all about pink ribbons and cures, sadly in 2019 alone, it was estimated that there would be 20, uh, 268,000 patients newly diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. And it's believed that there's an additional 150,000 to 250,000 people currently living with advanced breast cancer. However, those are just estimates. No official stats are taken just for metastatic breast cancer. Advanced stage breast cancer is not currently viewed as a chronic health condition such as diabetes, heart disease, or other diseases. People diagnosed with these conditions often live for 20 or more years, while sadly the average prognosis for advanced breast cancer is only 18 to 24 months, even as new therapies are developed. One of the major challenges to metastatic breast cancer community faces is a lack of research funding. According to Mediviver, for each $1 million spent on research for breast cancer, only approximately 20,000 is devoted solely to advanced breast cancers. That is only about 2% of all research funding. As someone battling metastatic breast cancer myself, I find that incredibly infuriating. For some reason, I always believe that metastatic breast cancer is something you only get when you got older. According to the CDC, women should start talking to their physician about breast cancer screenings after 40. The recommendation to begin annual mammograms is 45 to 50. I'd actually just hit that discussion with my physician the month prior to my diagnosis. I was only 43 and we decided it was something that we could explore in the future, but at my age with no risk factors, there was no pressing need to have a mammogram done early. I was diagnosed in September 2018. A few months later, in December, I met a wonderful young woman through a Facebook group named Shawnee. Shawnee was 26 years old, a wife and mother to a young son. She was pregnant with her second child when on December, 20, on December 2nd, 2018, she was rushed to the hospital because she was in severe pain whenever she tried to walk. After testing, they found she had fractures, fractures in her back related to stage 4 breast cancer. They did an emergency C-section that day and she began the long road to recovery. She had a hysterectomy with removal of her fallopian tubes so her body stopped producing the hormones that fed the cancer. She tried multiple lines of treatment, but none were successful. She fought long and hard, but passed away peacefully on September 27, 2020. She wasn't even 30 years old and left behind two small children. She died not even two years after diagnosis. One of the biggest misconceptions is that treatment for stage 4 breast cancer is always IV chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. The reality is that treatment options are must, much less aggressive than with early stage breast cancer. Since there is no cure for advanced breast cancer, the treatment is less aggressive and the focus is more on treating symptoms and controlling disease progression. This allows patients to maintain a quality of life for as long as possible. Breast Cancer Month is in October. That is when you start to be bombarded with pink ribbons, clothing, accessories, whatever, everywhere you go. The only one day devoted to awareness for metastatic breast cancer is October 13th. And most people aren't even aware that day exists. Often cancer of all kinds has a genetic link and a diagnosis can be emotionally jarring if you find out that there was none. But no one in my family has breast cancer. That's what I thought when I found out. 
Surprisingly, family history is a risk factor in less than 15% of all people diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, which means that family history does not cause it in an amazing 85% of diagnosed cases. Advanced breast cancer can strike anyone without warning at any time. People with metastatic breast cancer are in an odd position when trying to find support groups as well. They aren't generally well received in groups with early stage patients because it's hard to look at them and see what very well could happen to them in the future. Most metastatic breast cancer patients who haven't progressed to a point where they are in hospice don't want to go to one for stage four for the same reason. They don't want to be confronted by their future. I can't tell you how many times people tell me, hey, you look great. I'm so glad you beat the cancer. I knew you could do it. Metastatic breast cancer is very deceiving, and there's many ups and downs. For example, the oral chemotherapy I take causes fatigue. I was prescribed Ritalin to offset the effects, and I take it if I know that I'm going somewhere that I need to be alert. The things that I used to enjoy eating sometimes don't taste good anymore, and there's days I experience nausea just out of the blue. I can be completely exhausted, but I can only sleep for a couple hours at a time. I can be wide awake one minute and not off a short time later. Because the treatment is different, many people with stage 4 cancer do not lose their hair. They might gain weight, they might look perfectly healthy even when they aren't, and people forget they have cancer, or worse, might believe the person's lying that they even have it. The biggest effect can't be seen, though. The emotional toll is the hardest part. The prognosis of advanced breast cancer isn't encouraging. The dark cloud hanging over people with advanced breast cancer is difficult. It's hard to get through each day without the thought crossing your mind that the next appointment will be the one where you learn the cancer is worsened, that this line of treatment has failed. When you realize the prognosis could be as short as 18 to 24 months, it's hard for your mind to not go there. I'm now at 31 months since diagnosis and I'm grateful for every day, but fearful for what tomorrow brings. With each pain, each cracking bone sound, you think you have the worst and it's come back. For patients, life becomes measured in periods of time from appointment to appointment, CT scan to CT scan, blood test to blood test. It's really a generally terrifying experience. And often the effect can cause relationships to fall apart as well. And far too often people who are at one time friends, sometimes even family, can drift away. It's just too difficult. It forces the friend or family to confront their own mortality. If it happened to the patient, it could happen to anyone. Or sometimes they feel if they distance themselves now, it'll make it easier to accept when they lose someone. In the beginning, it's common for people to circle around with support. With other cancers, there's an end to treatment, remission. But with metastatic breast cancer, there is no end. In time, the support dwindles. How long can you rally around, rally around someone before it just becomes old and tired? Sadly, even if friends do try to hang on, Sometimes it just becomes too much for them. Sometimes the patients become just clingy and a little irrational as they fight to process their feelings. Sometimes it becomes too hard for them and they feel smothered, or possibly it might just be too difficult if they're, if they're the patient's sole or most important friend. Sometimes in the fear and anxiety, the patient might disrespect their friend without meaning to by focusing on themselves constantly, forgetting that while they're doing their best to show the support the patient needs, they might have struggles of their own that they're working through. This can drive a wedge between the patient and their friend, and at a certain point, unfortunately, the friend might begin to feel as though they need to cut off contact in order to protect their own mental health. It doesn't make the friend a bad person. Metastatic breast cancer doesn't just affect the patient. It affects everyone in their life as well. I'm not going to lie. Every night when I go to bed, I pray that when I wake up, it would be September 25th, 2018 all over again. When I woke up that morning, I was probably happier than I'd been in my life. I was working a job I absolutely loved. I was attending school to complete my bachelor's degree. My kiddos were almost grown and I was speaking to recruiters to begin a travel nursing career that I'd been looking forward to. And I had an amazing group of friends. Within nine months, I'd been forced to give up my dream for my bachelor's, lost my position at the hospital, went from exceptionally healthy to monthly doctor's visits, pet scans every three months, medications, and I become so depressed and scared at times that I drove away nearly every friend that I had until one day I looked around only to find them all gone. It was like I was going through Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's Elizabeth Kubler five stages of grief every day. 
By the time I found my way through to the other side, it was too late to try to regain the friends that meant so much to me. It becomes hard to be to find new friends once they hear the word stage four cancer. They too tend to drift away. It's been made even harder due to the COVID epidemic when a lot of cancer patients are homebound to stay safe from the virus due to their low immune systems. I'm not alone. Metastatic breast cha cancer changes the patient's lives. Things will never be the way they were. And the unfortunate reality is you're forced to search for a new normal, all while trying to keep the fear and uncertainty at bay. Pink ribbons are all around on t-shirts, water bottles, jackets, and many other items. For those of us with metastatic breast cancer, we are more than pink. We have our own ribbon featuring green, teal, and pink colors. The green represents the triumph of spring over winter, life over death, and symbolizes the renewal of hope and immortality. Teal symbolizes healing and spirituality, and the thin pink ribbon in the middle signifies that the metastatic breast cancer originated in the breast. We are more than pink, and we are more than a marketing campaign. I never asked for money from me, from family, or from friends, or from strangers. But if it's something that you'd be okay with, please consider donating some money to either MetaFiver or the Metastatic Breast Cancer Network. $1, $5, $50, whatever, anything helps. I will include their links in the description of this video. The statistics that I referenced come from both sites. For those of you who have stayed through the end of this visit, for those of you that have stayed through the end of this video, thank you so much, and I hope that you've learned something about what advanced breast cancer is and the effect it has on so many people. Before I leave, I'm going to play a video made by an amazing woman named Holly Kitchen. She made a short video set to Rachel Platten's fight song that explained what stage four cancer, breast cancer is. Um, I am going to have to play it without audio just due to the copyright laws. Um, Holly posted this video to Facebook on June 4th, 2015, and it went viral. You will see just how healthy she looked in the video. I mean, she looks great. She looks, she does. She really looks amazing. Sadly, only seven months later, on January 12th, 2016, she passed away. She was only 43 years old. Thank you all for taking the time to watch. I appreciate it.
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.